powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us here on the Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. Tensions could be reaching an all-time high between House Democrats and the Trump administration. The Judiciary Committee held a procedural vote earlier this morning on whether to hold the Attorney General in contempt of Congress for not complying with a subpoena to turn over the full Mueller report. Natalie Brand has the latest from Capitol Hill. Ms. Demings votes aye. Members of the House Judiciary Committee began proceedings Wednesday to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt of Congress. This is unprecedented. If allowed to go unchecked, this obstruction means the end of congressional oversight. Today's hearing comes after negotiations broke down between Chairman Jerry Nadler and the Department of Justice over the release of the full Mueller report and underlying materials. What a cynical, mean-spirited, counterproductive, irresponsible step it is. In response to the contempt vote moving forward, the Department of Justice wrote the House Judiciary Chair saying in part the president has exerted executive privilege over the entirety of the subpoenaed materials. I think what we're doing here is forcing the attorney general to break the law and shaming ourselves in the process. It's now up to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to decide whether the contempt resolution goes before the full House for a vote. Earlier at a Washington Post event, the House Speaker was asked about impeaching Barr. Well, nothing is off, ever off the table, but uh, I, I would say that uh, there's, there's, everybody would take a good deep breath and be almost prayerful about this, because this is a moment. This is a moment in our history. Legal analysts say this latest fight could end up in a lengthy legal battle that ends up in the Supreme Court. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now back in 2012, Republicans held former President Obama's Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt for failing to turn over documents related to the Fast and Furious scandal. Well, back here at home, we are taking a look at some of the results of the big-ticket school elections last night. In Billings, it was a night of celebration for School District 2 officials after long-awaited public approval. This morning's results show the $971,000 high school mill levy passing by about 20 percent. It's the first operational high school levy Billings voters have passed in a dozen years. The levy will fund classroom materials and career readiness in School District 2 high schools. In Helena, voters also passed a proposed in increase in the district's elementary school levy. The levy will collect an additional $103,000 a year. It will raise taxes just under $3 a year on a $200,000 home. The levy vote comes as district leaders raised concerns their budget could soon become unsustainable. And Stevensville voters approved a pair of bond issues. School district leaders say it will be a major step forward in fixing facilities, some of which date back 60 years. There's a $6.3 million elementary school bond and $14.1 million high school bond. The proposals were pared down after the district did extensive surveys following narrow rejection of a larger bond package a year ago. And for more information on specific area elections, you can visit your local MTN website. Well, now we'll turn things over to Rob Griggs in the Weather Center. Rob, we've got a little bit more cool weather, and then it seems to be warming up soon. Yeah, Mother's Day is really looking good right now. I like now. it. Yeah, a lot of happy folks around the area with the forecast because it's just going to get nice heading into the weekend. Let's take a little tour around the state right now, starting in Great Falls. Got some clouds. There are some showers in the area. 47 degrees with northeast winds about 3 miles an hour. There's some sunshine in Missoula. Blue skies been nice out there. 61 degrees with a light east breeze. Meanwhile, in Butte, 48 degrees and some clouds and a light south winds. Those south winds indicative of some warmer temperatures coming in. Helena, a few more clouds, a few showers in the area, 49 degrees with a north wind at 13 miles an hour. And uh, out in eastern Montana, Billings still under cloudy skies with an east wind gusting at times, uh, but still at 55 degrees. We're going to take a look at the statewide forecast from midweek on into Mother's Day, and I think you're going to like the information. It's coming up next, Samantha. All right, Rob, that sounds good. Well, on to some court news. It was the first day of the Caressa Hardy trial. As the defense team argued, the two victims aren't actually dead. They've just run away. Attorneys say, attorneys say one's victim was, was trying to flee the country for tax evasion. The other was tagging along to skip out on unpaid child support. The state says they have evidence they believe will lead to Hardy's conviction. The only witness to the alleged murders describing what she says was the murder scene. Do you remember saying anything to him at this time to the defendant? 
Yeah, I remember seeing, are they, are they dead? Did he kill them? You were saying it's out loud? Yeah. Did the defendant say anything to you? I can't remember. I just told him, please don't, please don't kill me. Please don't hurt or kill the babies, the children. We'll continue to follow that trial. It is expected to last a couple of weeks. Well, a former U.S. Fish and Wildlife Special Agent now admits to possessing child pornography, 48-year-old Sean Thomas Conrad entered a guilty plea in federal court on Tuesday. He could be sentenced up to 10 years in prison, fined $250,000, and have five years to life of supervised release. Billings Police began investigating Conrad last August while he was still employed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. A hard drive containing child porn was found in Conrad's agency vehicle. A laptop was also seized from his home, which also contained illegal images. Sentencing is set for September 6th. Well, Blackfeet Law Enforcement Services have issued an attempt to locate for a 22-year-old missing man. They are looking for Jordan Battled Man. According to authorities, he was last seen around 4 o'clock last night at the Blackfeet IHS in Browning. He's been described as about 5 foot 7 and about 4, 140 pounds with black hair and a slender build. He was last seen wearing a green hooded sweatshirt, blue jeans, and a black hat. If you do have any information, you are asked to call that number on your screen. In other news this afternoon, Montana Governor Steve Bullock has been busy signing 26 bills into law. MTN's Mike Dennison was there and tells us about how some of those highly publicized measures. Signing 26 bills in less than an hour is almost like an assembly line, but that didn't detract from the satisfaction and fun for bill sponsors and supporters who packed the governor's conference room to be part of the ceremony. Among the bills signed Tuesday are a pair sponsored by State Representative Shane Morzo of Missoula and others to help victims of child sexual abuse seek justice against their abusers or prevent it from happening in the first place. House Bill 640 increases the amount of time after the crime that victims of child sex molestation can sue their abusers for damages. And House Bill 173 essentially makes it illegal for teachers to have sexual relations with any student in 12th grade or lower. Supporters of both bills came to the ceremony on Tuesday. Bullock also signed a bill extending income tax credits for the cost of film production in Montana. It was joined by many members of the filmmaking community. And he signed the bill that increases funding for state parks by increasing the vehicle registration fee for parks from $6 to $9, a bill sponsored by Senator Terry Gauthier of Helena. The bill signing ceremonies for the governor are far from over. He's planning another big one on Thursday for health care related bills including the bill continuing Montana's $700 million a year Medicaid expansion program. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now, along with the ones that Mike just mentioned, the governor also signed an additional 48 bills into law yesterday. He vetoed a few as well. Well, coming up here on the new news, a young girl is taken into custody after a deadly shooting at a Colorado school on Tuesday. Those details when we come back. But first, we're halfway through the week and a change in the weather is on its way. Rob Griggs will have the full forecast right after the break. Watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Montana Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.